Hello, welcome back. This is Asura at Asura MBTI, and today's video is going to be on the differences between the ISTJ, the inspector slash trustee, and the INTJ, the visionary slash scientist. Now, a lot of people get confused between these two types because there is only a one letter difference, but that one letter difference changes their primary and repressed functions, and that is going to affect the decision making process. All right, let's go ahead and get started. As usual, I will start off by listing the cognitive differences between the two types. The ISTJ leads with introverted sensing, has secondary extroverted thinking, tertiary introverted feeling, and repressed extroverted intuition. The INTJ has dominant introverted intuition, secondary extroverted thinking, tertiary introverted feeling, and repressed extroverted sensing. Now you will note that the secondary and tertiary functions of these two types are exactly the same, extroverted thinking and introverted feeling. The main difference between the two is that the ISTJ leads with introverted sensing, while the INTJ leads with introverted intuition. And while these two functions, cognitive functions, are extremely similar because they're both introverted perceiving functions, they're actually very, very different. Introverted sensing and introverted intuition deal with the world in two very different ways. And I'll go into that a little bit more when I talk about the two types individually. Let's keep going. Let's start off by talking a little bit about the ISTJ. Now, as we said a moment ago, the ISTJ leads with introverted sensing. And what this means is that they have a very strong tie to memory and memory of a sensation. They are very strongly tied to reality, to what is. Because the ISTJ chooses to repress extroverted intuition, they're not going to want to explore ideas very often. They're not going to want to try new things as much as they're going to want to do and stay within what they already know to be good and comfortable for them. ISTJs make very good um, managers, but not always leadership-based managers, more like lower-end managers, because they're very good at making sure things are done the way that they're supposed to be done. Usually ISTJs, much like the INTJ, aren't going to want to lead as much as maybe enforce their own ideas on what things should be like. And to the ISTJ, things should be done by the book. Rules are there for a reason. They work because they've been shown to work in the past. And this is one strength of the ISTJ, is if something's even a little bit off, they're going to notice it because of their strong relation to their memory and memory of sensation. And this is what leads them to be very good at managing things like that and being very reliable in their workplace. You can always rely on an ISTJ to get a job done. Well, of course, according to their personality and who they are as an individual. But for the most part, they're very trustable people. You can give them a task and know that it's going to be done the way it needs to be done by the time it needs to be done. This is mainly because of their secondary extroverted thinking. And secondary extroverted thinking in the ISTJ is because they are a J type. They have a preference for extroverted judging. They want to shape their external world based on what introverted sensing tells them it should be like. And this is also what's going to lead them to be good at, again, managing things. Because they like to make sure that that external world is the way that they see it in their mind. The way that it is perceived to them. Now, tertiary introverted feeling in the ISTJ is going to lead them to act a few different ways. On the bonus side, ISTJs are usually very relaxed people. They're usually not too worried about what's going on in the world around them, except unless something is betraying what their ideals of what the world should be like are, such as maybe not agreeing with politics of some sort. But on the um, bad side of tertiary introverted feeling, they might be a little insensitive to others. They might not always think about what others are going to want or feel when it comes to getting things done. When they are by the books and they like to make sure that things are done by those books, they're going to push aside what others feel based on that. They might say, well, I don't really care that your way might be better. It needs to be done this way because that's the way it's always been done. And that is one strength and weakness of the ISTJ. But for the most part, ISTJs are not truly insensitive. They don't mean to be, at least. They are the same when it comes to INTJs in this sort, because they share that secondary extroverted thinking with tertiary introverted feeling. They're not usually meaning to be insensitive. It just comes off like that, because they're used to doing things the way that they see it in their mind, based on their perceptions. Going back again to their repressed extroverted intuition, this is going to lead them to be a little less interested in worrying about the future. ISTJs might prepare for the future doing what they know to be best, but they're not going to be interested in creating new ideas for the future, or not so much in changing the world as a whole. They are more so concerned with keeping stable what the world is like to them, how they can make sure that what is running continues to run the way it has always run, smoothly and stably. 
Now, this, again, can lead them to not want to deal with problems. I have known a few ISTJs on a personal level who, when they come across a problem that is involving the next week or two in front of them, they will try to ignore it, or they might try and sleep it off. ISTJs can be known to ignore things that are going to be too far ahead to worry about right now to them and what they are currently perceiving. Of course, this isn't going to be all ISTJs. That is more of a personal note. But for the most part, repressed extroverted intuition leads to a general dislike of thinking about the future and ideas that are going to lead them to change what they already know to be true to them. All right, on to the INTJ, and of course, I myself am an INTJ, and this one is kind of easy to explain for me. So the INTJ, where he differs or he or she differs from the ISTJ, is that dominant introverted intuition is more future and idea-based than introverted sensing. Where introverted sensing likes to come to conclusions based on the past and what is already known, Introverted intuition prefers to come to conclusions based on what could be. Introverted intuition looks at all of the possibilities of the future, narrows them down, and picks one that's going to work. This is what leads INTJs to be very visionary. They're going to look through their introverted intuitive scope and see something that could be done, something that would be more effective, and they're going to pursue it with everything they have. They're going to apply their secondary extroverted thinking to making sure this vision comes to reality. And this can also come off as insensitive to others. Again, with tertiary introverted feeling, the INTJ might not so much care what others have to say. INTJs might say, well, I am going to push to make this happen, and if you're not going to work with me, get out of my way. And this can come off to be insensitive, but the INTJ really means more of, if you're really not going to help me do what I need to do, please don't get in my way because I really want to get this done. It's not meant to be cold, it's not meant to be apathetic, but that is generally how it comes off to the outsider. Now, repressed extroverted sensing in the INTJ is going to lead them to want to ignore the present. This is a little bit different from the ISTJ who wants to ignore the future. INTJs experience things through their extroverted sensing. They receive information from the external world and then process it and interpret it through introverted intuition. Introverted intuition says, how did this come to be? What is the cause of this? And what is the effect of this? It looks for every single angle and perception of what they are looking at and tries to figure out a conclusion based on that. They're going to want to know where something is going from where it is now. And that is the general way in which INTJs live their everyday life. They're looking for their perspectives and alternatives to everything that they come across. While referring to the ISTJ and the INTJ, I always like to tell people that the ISTJ is a practical problem solver, while the INTJ is a creative problem solver. The ISTJ is going to solve a problem based on what they know is going to work based on what they have already experienced in their life, while the INTJ is going to think about what could work, how could we fix this, how could we make this better. The ISTJ likes to maintain while the INTJ likes to improve. They both have their strengths and weaknesses alongside that, but this is the difference in how they live their life, and this is the primary difference between the two types, is that the ISTJ likes to live more in the now and the past, while the INTJ likes to live in the future and push to make things happen. And that is why the um, ISTJ and INTJ both make very good managers in life because they like to make sure that things get done the way that they're supposed to be done or find a new creative way of making sure something gets done in a new and more efficient way. All right, that's all the time I have for this video, but thank you very much for watching this video and in its entirety, and I would really appreciate it if you could leave me a like, and more importantly, if you could subscribe. I really appreciate anyone who enjoys my videos, and I like hearing back from all of you. So if you want to leave me feedback, if you want to leave me comments, whether it be good or bad, let me know. But if you really like what I have to offer, I'm going to keep making videos. Hit that subscribe button. Keep watching. These different videos are going to keep coming out. I'm going to keep releasing MBTI content. All right, this is Asura at Asura MBTI. Have a good one.